Hey, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your Raw Reaction Show. Glenn Thomas here, part of the Wrestling Marks of Excellence here on Fox Sports Radio 1340 AM and 96.9 FM. As always, you can check catch us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, as well as YouTube. Make sure you hit that bell notification and that subscribe button. But let's get to this past Monday Night Raw. Uh, but first, but first, before we get to Monday Night Raw, let's send out our condolences to the family of the King Kong Bundy, who passed away at the age of 61. If you don't know who King Kong Bundy is, go ahead and check it out on the W. WWE Network. He was one of a one of the legends from the 1980s. A big role in the legacy of Hulk Hogan. Him and Hulk Hogan had some great matches. WrestleMania 2. Uh, they had a great match as well. Um, but King Kong Bundy, if you don't know, always was famous for the five count. You know, traditional wrestling WWE. Most guys asked for to get the three count for the pin, but Bundy wanted two extra seconds on his count. But once again, condolences go to King Kong Bundy uh, and his family. Another legend gone too soon but let's get to monday night raw this past my monday night raw we saw roman reigns and seth rollins kick off the show uh this past monday night with roman reigns saying that you know he wished seth rollins the best as he takes on brock lesnar at wrestlemania seth rollins thought that roman wanted to take his title shot because roman relinquished the title due to his leukemia and seth rollins also said he mentioned how he, he know how to feel when he had to relinquish the title because of his injury a couple of years ago. Well, Roman Reigns said that's not what he wanted. He wanted a favor from Seth Rollins, and that was to get the band back together one more time, and the band meaning the Shield to get it together one more time. And the reason being by one more time, and a lot of you wrestling fans who listen to this already understand and know that Dean Ambrose is allegedly leaving the WWE as a WrestleMania. Uh, there's been reports coming out this week that it is a work, that he has come to terms with WWE, that he's not leaving, that he is staying. Uh, in my opinion, I always thought it was a work. Uh, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll never know until we won't know until after WrestleMania if it's a work or not, if Dean Ambrose is staying or leaving with the company. But nonetheless, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns wanted to get the band back together again. And Seth Rollins was a little a little hesitant about that, uh, but we find that Seth Rollins eventually asked Dean Ambrose, and Dean Ambrose didn't even give him an answer uh, whether he wanted to get the band back together or not, not until later on in the show. Uh, that We saw a match between Elias and Dean Ambrose, which just came stemmed from early in the night when Dean Ambrose came out to the ramp and Elias attacked Dean Ambrose by striking him over the back with a guitar. Uh, Dean, Amb Dean Ambrose and Elias went on and had a good match here on Monday Night Raw where Elias picked up the win in this match. And Dean Ambrose, if you don't know, has been on a losing streak as of late here in the WWE since the news came out uh, that he would be leaving the WWE. He has been on a losing streak. But nonetheless, uh, Dean Ambrose still didn't want the help from the Shield until Boy Baron Corman, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre came out. And then we saw the Shield fight off Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Baron Corbin. We set up the match for this Sunday's Fast Lane where you see the Shield once again together united as a united front to take on Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. Hey, let me know if you're excited to see the Shield uh, according to WWE one last time, quotation marks. Uh, if you're excited to see the Shield back together, and I think WWE just hit the reset button here, went back to the storyline where prior to Roman Reigns announcing that he has leukemia, leukemia has returned, we saw the Shield together. The Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose situation was accelerated uh, just because we knew they, they knew Roman was leaving. And so you had the Shield back together once again for, again, one more time uh, as they would take on Baron Corbin and take on Drew McIntyre as well as Bobby Lashley uh, this Sunday at Fastlane. Other things could happen on this past Monday Night Raw. We saw Tamina take on Sasha Banks here. The tag team match with Tamina and Nia Jax would take on Sasha Banks and Bailey this Sunday for the Raw, for the women's tag team titles. Uh, on this past Monday Night, Tamina picks up a win over Sasha Banks, which means if you didn't watch wrestling and if you know anything about professional wrestling, which means Tamina and Nia Jax will not go over on this Sunday at Fastlane. I cannot see Sasha Banks and Bailey losing the title this quickly after winning it. I think they will be a pivotal part or a main part of the WrestleMania card here in 34 days uh, that's coming up. But nonetheless, Tamina picks up the win over Sasha Banks on this past Monday Night Raw. Uh, then we saw a match that I am tired of seeing. I don't know about you guys. Tired of seeing this match week after week after week. Braun Strowman, Kurt Angle, and Finn Balor taking on Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley. We've seen this match multiple, multiple times, and yet again, 
Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, and Bobby Lashley pick up the win as Finn Balor get pinned by Bobby Lashley. Hopefully, we set up a match between Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor, Finn Balor for the Intercontinental Championship somewhere down the line. Only time would tell, but nonetheless, Finn Balor, Kurt Angle, and Braun Strowman <laughs> kind of lost the match. And Drew, we, as I mentioned earlier, we saw what happened to Baron Corbin, Bobby Lashley, and Drew McIntyre later on the show as, a, as they were beat up by the Shield and had a retreat in their match at Fastlane on this Sunday night. Then we saw the Revival take on Aleister Black and Ricochet for the Raw Tag Team titles. We knew that the Revival had lost to Aleister Black and Ricochet just a few weeks ago. But this was this time the titles are on the line. Very good match back and forth between the Revival, Alistair Black, Ricochet. These guys, a little bit was in NXT, not together. But NXT stars are putting on a great great show in here in WWE. It's good that WWE is using the NXT stars to promote the brand even more. And to showcase some of their better talent that came from NXT. Alistair Black, former NXT champion. Ricochet, former North American champion. Uh, we know that the Revival are a very good tag team. One of the best tag teams in the business. And now we're getting an opportunity to shine on Monday Night Raw. But there was a little bit of interference here. Bobby Roode and Chad Gable interfered in this match. Which caused a disqualification uh, in this match. And Ricochet and Alistair Black didn't take too kindly to it, which we'll probably see in some way down the line, fast lane, maybe WrestleMania, end up seeing a three-way dance for the WWE Raw, in a, for the Raw Tag Team Championship, somewhere down the line there, uh, but nonetheless, the Revival are still your Raw Tag Team Champions, holding strong are the Revival, and the Tag Team Division in the WWE is picking up. It's good to see WWE focusing on the Tag Team Division here, because the WWE Raw Tag Team Division has suffered for a long time since the bar had the Tag Team Championships a little over a year ago. So it's good to see that WWE try to pick it up just a little bit by bringing in the, uh, by bringing in Alistair Black, by bringing in Ricochet and making them a tag team to give them opponents. Give, give the Revival some opponents because later on in the night we saw why the Revival are the better tag team. And this part here, we saw... Triple H come out to address Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista came, comes on the screen and lets everyone know that he's not going to be in Philadelphia. Sorry, Philly ain't going to be there. He's not, he may not be in Pittsburgh. He may be wherever WWE, wherever Triple H don't want him to be. He may show up whenever he wants. But it was announced later on the night that he will be in Pittsburgh. Him and Triple H will be face-to-face -face next Monday night from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to address the situation with Ric Flair and probably set up their WrestleMania match, which we know as wrestling fans is going to happen. A lot of people don't want to see this match. I'm excited for this match. I want, want to see Batista take on uh, Triple H uh, at WrestleMania. I think it's going to be a pretty good match. Batista right now is being the heel uh, in this place, uh, in this match, and Triple H being the face. Uh, first WrestleMania in a while that Triple H was actually the face, will be the face uh, at a WrestleMania match here. I uh, saw Triple H in the last previous WrestleMania matches be healed, and he had lost. He's on a losing streak at WrestleMania. So I predict that Richard Triple H will eventually probably get the win here over Batista whenever the WrestleMania, when WrestleMania occurs. And But it's a good storyline between Dave Batista and Triple H. And we saw a little bit of emotion from Triple H. He cut a promo about Ric Flair, about how much Flair meant, uh, meant to him and how Dave attacked him on the night uh, that Flair uh, was going to be celebrated by the WWE Universe. Good storyline. Hey, Dave Batista wanted this match for over two years, and he's finally going to get it at WrestleMania. Then we move on to the highlight of the show, the coup de grace, the main event of the evening. Whatever you want to call it, the best part of Raw was the fact that Stephanie McMahon mentioned earlier that she had stripped Ronda Rousey of the women's championship there because Ronda Rousey just laid it down. She advocated it. She just relinquished the title and then she reinstated Becky Lynch that her 60 day suspension is no more and that Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair will go on to face each other at fast lane for the vacant Raw Women's Championship if Becky Lynch was able to sign a waiver saying that if she got injured even worse than what she really was that the WWE was not going to be liable for anything that happens to her. 
they was getting ready to sign this, sign this paper. Baker Lynch signed, said she didn't care. Charlotte said, "Woo, it's all about me. Let's get it done. Let's get it on." But how many you know that wasn't just the end of the end of that segment there? Because Ronda Rousey wasn't going to sit by and let this happen. Ronda Rousey comes to the ring and she cuts a promo on not only the fans, she cuts a promo on Charlotte Flair, she cuts a promo on Becky Lynch. And if you know anything about Becky Lynch and Ronda, they've been going back and forth over the weekend on social media, whether it was scripted by WWE or whether it's them two just taking liberty into their own hands, it was on fire, talking about each other's husbands. Well, Becky Lynch talking about Ronda's husband, and Ronda responded and said, when I see you in the street, baby, I'm going to catch you. Baby, in other words, catch you outside. But nonetheless, Ronda and Becky had a verbal uh, verbal war on Twitter, and it came to a head on this past Monday Night Raw, where Ronda Rousey, just as you figured it she turned heel which is a good thing for ronda rousey she snapped she beat up charlotte flair she beat up becky lynch uh she was going to beat up stephanie mcmahon until she bailed out of the ring this is what fans wanted to see reason why this is a smart move by wwe to allow ronda rousey to turn heel because she wasn't going to get cheered in new york anyway if you don't believe me go back to a couple past episodes of the wrestling marks of excellence you can find it on itunes where we talked about ronda rousey being in the new york market and how becky lynch will be the face regardless if wwe turned her or not because based off the crowd that was going to be there the european crowd that was going to be there based off the fact that the wwe universe is filling Becky Lynch right now and Charlotte Flair and the fact that Ronda Rousey is one of the top stars in the in, in WWE and she doesn't need to be faced let her be the heel let her get a heel run before she retires or leaves to do whatever she's gonna do it is good for business it sells the pay-per-view even more because now you see another side of Ronda Rousey she's no longer the corporate puppet of the WWE and she does what she wants to do here but Ronda got the best of Becky Lynch Ronda <laughs> Ronda Rousey was that the woman last night and this made fans all over cheer because they wanted to see Ronda Rousey snap hey let me know your opinion are you happy that Ronda Rousey turned heel or would you rather see Ronda Rousey say face uh, let me know leave a comment in the comment section below but it's good to see moving forward how WWE plays the storyline. As we had mentioned earlier, 34 days until WrestleMania to see how this plays out. But nonetheless, fast lane will be Charlotte Flair taking on Becky Lynch. If Becky wins, she will be added into the match with Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. If Becky loses, she will not have a match at WrestleMania at all. So let's be honest. How many of you think Ronda Rousey, uh, Becky Lynch is going to lose? hands anybody in it nobody thinks becky lynch is gonna lose becky lynch wins this sunday hands down but then we come to the new hall of fame inductee tori wilson been a lot of social media chatter about this uh, she even had gail kim come to her defense a lot of people don't believe that tori wilson deserves to be inducted into the hall of fame now maybe not this year as some people stated that she don't think tori wilson is a hall of fame that there are other women that could have been inducted before tori wilson i.e many things sable should have been inducted victoria could have been inducted uh a lot of women names out there. Molly Holly could have been inducted before Tori Wilson. Stacy Keebler. Kelly Kelly. Many people think Tori Wilson didn't contribute enough to the WWE to be inducted as a, as a Hall of Fame. Hey, it's the WWE's Hall of Fame. They can do what they want to do, when they want to do it, and how they want to do it. Tori Wilson had a good career in the WWE. If you look at it, she kind of held it down a little bit when there really wasn't that many women uh, that was there in that SmackDown era. She was one of the women that was downloaded the most. She was in calendars. She was in videos. She did the Good Morning America. She did everything the WWE asked her to do, and she was a major player in WWE in the early late 90s and early 2000s. So her induction to the WWE Hall of Fame is justified. Whether you like it or not, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. Should Tori Wilson be a WWE Hall of Famer? Yes or no. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Thomas here from the Wrestling Marks of Excellence. Hope you enjoy this raw reaction review. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Leave the thumb up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification. And please tune in this week to the Wrestling Marks of Excellence on iTunes as we drop a new podcast every Thursday morning. This week, we're talking about Fastlane, giving you our predictions. Also, giving you our thoughts on Ronda Rousey's heel turn, as well as... The induction of Tori Wilson. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Thomas here from the Wrestling Marks of Excellence. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that bell notification. Catch you tomorrow night as I review SmackDown.